the Creality Ender 3 V2. Thanks to Lux and Watts, I have one right here, and we're gonna check it out today. My name's Jim, and this is The Edge of Tech. Like I said, we're gonna be checking out the Ender 3 V2 from Creality today. Now, Lux and Watts is an Amazon reseller of the Creality products. They sent me this to do a video and check out the Ender 3 V2. So I really appreciate that. But full disclosure, they did send this to me to do the video, but all the opinions are my own. And they said I had free reign on the video anyway. Now this right here is the Creality Ender 3 V2. At first look, it looks pretty much like a very cleaned up Ender 3 Pro. And that's pretty much what it is. Uh, it has pretty much everything an Ender 3 Pro has, but they made it look a little more stylish and they revamped some things and they've added some things from the Ender 3 Pro. If you notice, it actually has a glass bed. The glass bed is actually pretty good. I always suggest you clean it when you first get it and things stuck very well to the glass bed on the Ender 3 V2. The next thing you might notice is the belt tensioners. Uh, there's belt tensioners on your X and your Y axis now. So all you have to do is turn them to tension the belts. Now this was a really cool add-on because a lot of us put these on our printers anyway, and it makes it super easy for us to dial those belts in very good. But be careful, you don't wanna over tighten them because that could cause them to break. The other thing to notice is there's a brand new hot end design here. It looks a little bit harder to get into than the Creality Ender 3 Pro or the Ender 3. That's because it's encased here. But if you check it out, there's a nice sock underneath and everything is really clean on this hot end. Something else they did on the Y axis, they went to the 4040 extrusions. These things are beefy and they're strong and they definitely will hold up the build plate of the Ender 3 V2. Another cool thing, they added a toolbox that slides out that can house your tools or whatever else you wanna put in there. It's really cool because you can store your extra parts, your Allen wrenchers, and even your snippers right in the toolbox that was built in. They also added an extruder knob, which is really cool because it's blue. A lot of us printed this anyway, so thanks Creality for throwing that in. This also has a brand new board with the silent 2208 steppers. This thing is really silent with the exception of the fans. I think you get that on pretty much any of the printers that are coming with the silent boards. The fans are always the loudest thing now. They actually moved the power supply from behind the rail here to underneath, which I really like. I think that design is great. It's not flapping around back here anymore like it was on the Ender 3 and the Ender 3 Pro. It also has a brand new user interface and a brand new screen, and uh, it is turn dial, but I tell you what, I really like the brand new interface. Uh, you can actually cycle through the menus real easily. You can select what you're looking for, and the menus are set up very nice on the brand new screen uh, and the brand new user interface. A couple things that I did note was the uh, SD card um, actually came formatted with NTFS, which is the wrong format for the 3D printers. It needs to be FAT32. They had all the stuff on the card, but no test prints. And when you dropped a G-code file on the card, the it would not see it. I know Narice found that on his channel as well. If you get the card, you put a G-code file on there and you throw it in your printer and it doesn't recognize it, it's probably because it's formatted wrong. All you have to do is jump on your computer and format it as FAT32 and you'll be rocking and rolling. All right, let's jump into some prints that I did with this. I didn't have a lot of time with it yet, but I will show you what I did so far and what I think of it. And I like to credit Michael from Teaching Tech for coming up with these tests for our Ender 3 to check them out. So everything you see in white was files that came from Michael at Teaching Tech. And the prints you see in the Coex Blue Mystery Filament are prints that I sliced with the default Prusa Slicer Ender 3 profile. The first thing I did was this speed test here. It turned out very good, and I'm really happy with the results of that. All in all, it looks pretty good with all of the speeds featured in this test. Next, I did this temperature tower. Uh, it turned out really well. It kind of dialed in what temperatures I should be using. And this was done, again, in that white Creality filament that came with the printer. I think it turned out really good and helped me dial in what temperatures to use. And the bridging turned out really good as well. So this was interesting. This was a all-in-one that I did straight from my old Ender 3. So I just wanted to see what would happen if I uh, just put a already sliced file from an Ender 3 over a year ago on this printer. And it didn't do too bad. As you can see, the overhangs aren't that bad. They definitely could be better and cleaned up. Once I punch in the findings from the other tests, they definitely will be. 
Uh, it printed everything on the front, which is awesome. Also, it did a pretty good job on the inside. Um, not bad for something that was not sliced specifically for this printer. Next, we have Arya the Dragon, another great model. And this one was sliced with Prusa Slicer using the default Ender 3 profile. And all I did was change the temperatures. There is a little bit of stringing. Uh, you can't barely see it right up in here. Uh, but other than that, this thing turned out very good just for that default profile. It needs some tuning, but this has a lot of promise, especially because it was just a default profile. Something to note, be careful when you're taking things off the bed. The glass actually stuck way better than I thought it would be. And when I went to grab it, even after cooling down, I broke my Aria Dragon. And I'm very sad about this because this was actually a really good first print Aria Dragon. So just be careful, let the bed cool down and take some time pulling things off. I was not expecting the bed to stick this good. Next, I printed this vase. All I did was throw it into spiralized mode. Uh, it knew what to do and told it what temperatures. It came out really good. It shines and reflects the light great. And it's one of the better vases that I've seen come off of a printer with a default profile. So I did have a failure and I was printing a bracket for some Ryobi batteries uh, found on Thingiverse. Everything I've shown here, I'll put a link to on Thingiverse so you can try them yourself along with the filament I used. So with this particular print, you can see I had some issues with cooling there on the underneath where it should be bridging. And also at the top here, I had a pretty nasty layer shift. It was almost done. Uh, I hit the control button on the printer to go back to the home page. Um, I'm not sure why it showed me that option, but it did. And for some reason it layer shifted and it was almost done. You can see it right there where it layer shifted. And so I had to stop it. I could still use this part and just use it, you know, just use it not finished like this. And I'm fine with that. Uh, but I did want to show it on camera that I did have an issue. Um, otherwise, it printed really good. I mean, as you can see, the layers are, are nice in there. It looks like I needed to do some more top layers to get rid of that infill there. As far as the sidewall goes though, that's pretty good. It's a heck of a print and I wish it would have finished. So my overall summary of this printer is I actually like it. It's growing on me. I need some more time with it. I haven't had it very long, but I wanted to get this video out. I showed you the failure I had with that layer shift. Um, I think that was just maybe the SD card um, or the control. I'm not sure what happened there. It happens. Maybe my belts were too tight. I'm not sure. As you saw by the vase and the Aria Dragon, uh, this thing prints really good out of the box, especially using the default Ender 3 profile on Prusa Slicer. Literally, all I did was change the temperatures. I did not mess with anything else. I'm gonna dial this thing in uh, specific to this machine, but it is super close to an Ender 3 Pro or an Ender 3, so that default profile in Prusa Slicer uh, works actually really well. I think the price is really good for what it comes with. It's everything an Ender 3 Pro would be, plus some bonus features and upgrades straight from the factory. I think uh, new people are really gonna like that. I think it's great for them because they'll jump right into it and uh, not have to worry so much about the upgrades, even though that is some of the fun sometimes. The other thing I didn't mention is this thing's pretty heavy. It is very heavy duty for what it is. It's definitely heavier than the Ender 3 Pro or the Ender 3. I think it's built very good and it's gonna hold up for a long time. It, one thing I forgot to mention is something I noticed on the bottom. It sits on some really nice vibration dampers all the way around this machine. They're thick and they definitely help with the noise transfer to whatever surface you have it on. It's much better than the ones that came on the Ender 3 or the Ender 3 Pro. And I tell you, I really like that feature and I'm glad they added it because a lot of us have these sitting in our houses and we want them to be as quiet as possible. Like I said, the loudest thing about this is the fans now. That's something that if you really wanted to, you could change out to make it quieter. I don't think it needs it. Maybe when they die and you have to replace them, then it's time for a quieter fan, but stock, I think it's pretty good. It'd be a great, first 3D printer, because everything's really included. It doesn't go together quite as easy as an Ender 5, which I really love for first timers, and I will have an assembly video coming out soon. Another thing I didn't like is they actually included the standard bed springs on this. I really wish they would send the yellow bed springs like they have with some of the other pro models. Um, I, I always upgrade to them. I will do that as soon as I'm done with this video because that's one of the first things I like to do. But other than that, there's not a lot negative to say. It prints really good straight out of the box using that Prusa Slicer Ender 3 profile. 
Well, that's a quick video for you today on the Ender 3 V2, courtesy of Lux & Watts. I hope you learned something today, and as always, keep printing. Hey everybody, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give me that thumbs up and like the video. Click that subscribe button right here, and that little bell if you want to get notified anytime we go live on Mondays for our live show called Hot Makes, or anytime we put out a video like this. Have you seen this one yet?